All right, guys, this is Drew Beck for round three of the Mississippi Valley Regional Tournament. We have Derek on the left this round versus Katie on the right. Now, this is a huge tournament. We're only round three deep. I believe there's going to be nine rounds today and a top 32 cut as well. All right, so it looks like Katie started off with a Sigilif versus Derek's Tornado CX deck. Um, these are two uh, cards we haven't seen yet today, so looks like we're going to get some variety. And Katie ends right off the bat. Katie also uh, mulliganed a few times, I believe, so she's trying to get those extra cards out of Derek's hand. I'm not sure what either player is, uh, what other cards they have in the deck. Looks like a ho -Ho in Katie's hand, so she's playing uh, the ho, -Ho deck that our very own Kyle Sukovich made popular. And it's a very solid deck versus the format. Uh, it doesn't have any great matchups, Kyle would say, but um, it can stick around in games and really steal some wins if played well enough. All right, so Kitty goes ahead and grabs a Bouffalant. Um, Bouffalant is very good versus these EX Pokemon we see. It does 60 plus 60 more damage if the defending Pokemon is an EX Pokemon. Now, Katie went ahead and discarded the Ho-Oh and the Psychic Energy for that Ultra Ball. Now, uh, Ho-Oh allows you to flip a coin. If heads, you bring the Ho-Oh back out of the discard pile and attach three energy to it. Um, the Psychic is kind of strange because she probably doesn't play a large amount of Psychic Energies, so she might need that to attack with the Sigil, if you think. So we are going to see Derek play an end of his own. He's going to have a hard a hard time versus Sigilyph. Uh, its body stops it from being attacked by EX Pokemon. Yeah, prevent all damage done to Sigilyph by EX Pokemon. So uh, Tornadus can't do anything right now. And we will see what Derek is able to draw. He, he's only had this Tornado CX out. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the rest of his deck um, contains. He obviously has fighting energy, so you have to imagine he's playing maybe some Landers, maybe some Trakions. Looks like he got some Mewtwo's, which are also not good in this situation at all. And he's in some trouble if he can't get uh, an attacker out that can deal with Sigilyph. And we'll see if Katie is able to get a Psychic out and attack this turn. Maybe she uh, thought she was grabbing a different card from her hand, something like that. But she got a horrible end off of Derek. And we will see what she's able to do here. She uses a scoop up, I believe, which is interesting. Not sure how that would help her position. And it looks like she's just going to have to pass it back and we're going to have a little bit of a stalemate until one of these players can get going. This is, like I said, this is going to be a marathon tournament today. Nine rounds, we started late. Uh, the tournament staff is doing the best they can. And uh, I've heard rumors that this venue actually closes at 7, so it's going to be inter interesting to see if we actually finish Swiss today or not. Now, Derek used a tool scraper, which discards two tools in play. She chose both Eviolates that Katie had down. Uh, EVLA is a card that reduces damage done to Pokemon by 20 damage, so um, Derek is able to swing for 20 more damage. And he also played a uh, Spirita City Gym down, which increases the HP of colorless Pokemon by 20, and it allows Blow Through to do 60 damage rather than uh, 30. And that 60 damage is then reduced by 20 because of Bouffalant's power. Katie still does not have anything. She's in a, a weird spot. But she does have the Sigilyph out, which you know, all Derek has down are those EX Pokemon. 
and even if she loses the Bouffalant, he there can't do anything. All right, so she does switch back out to the Sigilith to stall. She's just trying to top deck something here to get going. And we'll see if Derek is able to do anything. You have to imagine he plays his own non-EX attackers, whether it's Terrakion, he's got fighting energy obviously, maybe his own Bouffalant, something like that. And another end, we've seen a lot of ends this game right off the bat. And I would like to just compliment both these players on their amazing playmats. You know, Katie's got the Squirtle Squad, uh, a classic, classic thing from Pokemon, from the TV show. And you know, Derek's got his, uh, a team mat, which is just very well done. Got some coughings on there, it looks like. Just very, very well done. I'm gonna have to find out where they got those done from. And uh, maybe Top Cut will be uh, getting some new mats in the future. Alright, looks like he did not get a uh, catcher. Catcher would bring the Bouffalant back out, or even a, a non-EX attacker, so he's in a tough spot. I'd like to see him attach an energy, perhaps. I don't really see why I would hold it. Alright. Another Sigilyph. This is uh, the beauty of this ho deck. It plays like a lot of, I would call them tech cards, to just be able to play from any situations. It reminds me of uh, the six corner deck from last format, where you'd play not that much energy acceleration. You know, the ho -Oh is your energy acceleration. You just try to stay in games long enough with your tech cards and eventually win. Because it, it really doesn't have good matchup so to speak. It's not going to overpower anything. But Katie did get a Psychic so she has started attacking. Sigilyph does 50 damage plus 10 more damage for each energy attached to the defending. So it did 70 minus 20 from Derek's Eviolite. And he still has nothing. That is a bad sign from Derek. He didn't get a support of that turn and has to pass it back. This is going to be a a slow game for sure because Sigilyph isn't exactly hitting for a ton of damage, but she is safe from these EX Pokemon. She has uh, a pretty solid hand now, I would say. She's going to be able to power up some of her other attackers. She's not going to want to play down other Pokemon, but she can get another Sigilyph ready. Uh, she can throw another energy on the Bouffalon if she really wanted to. I don't think it's very necessary. She is in a dominant board position right now. It'll be interesting to see if she just full steams ahead with the Sigilyph, which, I mean, you'd have to imagine that's what she's going to do here. Alright. So another 50 damage. It's going to be Looks like Derek actually has an N in his hand, a uh, DC. We'll see if he plays any of those energy down before using the N, or even if he uses the N. You have to imagine he would, though, trying to find another attacker. We are at table one. Both these players are 2-0 going into this round, and we still have six prizes left in this match. Neither player has struck first blood, so to speak. And there is another in. Derek is desperately trying to find a different attacker here for this matchup. He is way down on the uh, energy. He's missed a few energy drops here. Katie has just an uh, overwhelming board position right now. You have to believe he's playing Terrakion. And there's an Ultra Ball, so we are going to see 
Uh, if he's got a 90x attacker in that deck, and there's a Bufalon, so we have both of those. You have to imagine he's going to Ultra Ball here, search through his deck, see what he's got. And Katie does have that ho -Oh in her discard pile. She can bring that back if things go south later on in this match. You know, get some energy into play. That is the energy acceleration for her deck. I believe she only has the one Psychic right now, but if any of her Pokemon go down, she'll have a number of energy in there. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Sigilyph has a Pokemon, or an ability, Safeguard, which prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EX. Derek only has a Mewtwo EX and a Torneus EX out, so he can't do any damage to Katie's active Pokemon. And he will play a Bufalon. Um, Bufalon, he's got to get a 90 x attacker out. So, I mean, he's playing the Bufalon down. But it doesn't really do much damage to the Sigilyph. It doesn't knock it out. So Katie's going to be able to uh, retreat around it kind of and um, maybe knock it out with her Terrakion or something because she does have a Terrakion in her hand. And she's going to go ahead and discard another ho -Oh and a Grass Energy so she has a couple of ho -Oh opportunities down the road if she needs them. ho -Oh is flip a coin if heads take ho -Oh down and put them on your bench and choose up to three basic energies and attach it to it with its rebirth ability. And she's going to go ahead and get another Tracheon. I believe she had one in her hand already, so big Tracheon's got backup if he needs it. And Ho's ability does need different energy in the discard pile as well. Can't just grab three psychics. It's got to be some combination of like psychic, fire, fighting, stuff like that. Three different types. So she will power up the Trachyon, uh, back up for her Sigilyph. You know, if Derek retreats and does 60 to the Sigilyph, if she has something like uh, energy switch, she could just right ahead power it up and do the 90 attack, or if something gets knocked out, she can retaliate for the knockout. So she retreats and does, uh, I believe it's called Gold Breaker for 120 to the Tornado CX to finish it off. She has four prizes now. And Derek, his back is against the wall. He's got a very bad board position. I'm not sure. Uh, the 20 CX had 100, I believe. At 100, Goldbreaker did 120. All right. So there's the Skyla. for a Juniper, so Derek isn't even going to get to see the advantage from this Juniper until next, or from this Skyline until next turn. He's kind of just setting up for his next turn, hoping that things don't go way south between now and then. It looks like he has an energy. It looks like it's a DCE though, which is really tough. He's going to put two DCEs on his Bufalant, which you don't like to see. And Bufalon isn't really even doing much into another Bufalon, you know. It only does 60 minus 20, so the Bufalon, it just shrugs off, you know. I don't care about that.
He is in definitely a tough spot, judging by the board right now. You hate the count out decks in this format, but you know, KD doesn't have any EX Pokemon out. Uh, it's going to be hard for Derek to mount a comeback through that way by knocking out a bunch of EX Pokemon. KD has a bunch of energy in play, so she's going to be able to power up attackers pretty easily. And if things go way south, she's got Ho. -Oh. So he actually had a fighting in his hand. And he's going to hit it for 40. Now, if Katie has an energy switch in her hand, she can have a devastating play where she energy switches, attaches to the Trachyon, and does um, land crush and just knock out the Bufalant, which would be heartbreaking for Derek because that's his only 90x Pokemon out in play right now. And she could go right back to Sigilyph if she really wanted to, but uh, it doesn't look like she's actually going to be able to need to do that. She has such a dominating position, it appears. And she will Skyla. I'd like to see her get an energy switch here. I think I saw one. She's taking her time here, looking through your deck. You love to see players do that. A lot of players rush their action and just grab the energy switch right away. But uh, you like to see players, you know, like count up how many catchers you have left, uh, how many supporters do I have left, stuff like that, which is going to help you down the road. You know, uh, you're going to see maybe figure out what's in your prizes. You have some time to search your deck, so you might as well take advantage of it. And it looks like she's actually going for a catcher here. Maybe she wants to do 120 to the Mewtwo. Force Derek into uh, maybe knocking out her Bouffant. She definitely has an energy switch in her deck. And she will use a computer search, which is uh, interesting because You know, with Scala, you can pretty much grab almost any card you want from your deck. So you don't really need to use Computer Search. It looks like she just wanted to uh, discard more cards from her deck, you know, thin it out. She didn't want that Ho-Oh to come back into her hand later. So she went ahead and grabbed the Computer Search to get three Ho's in the discard pile now. And, you know, I keep waiting for her to grab the Energy Switch, but... We'll see if she has other things planned. And the camera died, so sorry for these technical difficulties. I think All right, so the camera's back. Doesn't look like we missed anything. And the camera's gone. All right, one second, guys. Someone keeps uh, kicking the camera cord, I believe, is what the problem is. Sorry about that, guys. Um, nothing we can really do about it. So I'm not sure what Katie did there. It looks like she just attached to the Terrakion and was content to just hit the Bufalon for 40. I have no idea what she grabbed with the computer search. Looks like... That was definitely an interesting play by Katie. She could have <laughs> she could have knocked out the Bufalon. I mean, we all saw her deck. I'm not sure why she didn't do that. But maybe she has uh, some sort of game plan that we don't see. I see a little kid head towards our cord right now, so... Apologize in advance if things go south. Right, so Derek uh, got the Mewtwo active, has a DC. He's going to be able to take out this Bufalant. 
and he actually chooses not to. Chooses to go after the Trigon. The Trigon is, you know, probably the biggest threat to him because the Bouffalon doesn't care about the other cards. The Bouffalon has to live pretty much for him to win, I think. So he's by going after Trigon, he thinks maybe I can get rid of this and my Bouffalon will survive. Because the Bouffalon is going to be able to knock out the other Bouffalon and stuff like that. So we will see how this develops for Derek. He has not taken a prize yet. He's down two prizes at this point. He's facing this wall of Sigilus all game. His EX Pokemon are pretty much nullified at this point. And Katie has him against the wall. She has three Ho-Ohs in her discard pile at this point, I believe. I'm not sure what she grabbed off the computer search due to our camera failure, but we will see. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if she ends here, tries to get some fresh cards. She also has her own Mewtwo, so she can try to do something with that if she wanted to, but no, she just ends. So, we will see what Derek gets. Derek has been drawing pretty mediocre, I would say, this whole game. See if he can get on his comeback trail here or not. And we'll see what Katie got. She's getting four cards off it in his draw based on the number of prizes you have. Derek gets six. Katie has four. It looks like she's got a handful of supporters. It looks like two... Uh, at least two or three supporters and a Sky Arrow, which is not helping her. And she can only do 30 to the Mewtwo. That is, that's uh, a wasted opportunity for her there. She's still ahead in the game, but she really didn't want that Tracheon to go down like this. And I believe she also missed an energy drop there. So that's the power of N. Uh, she kind of shot herself in the foot there with her own end, but she does have supporters for next turn. Uh, Derek's going to be able to knock out this track on. We'll see if he uh, just takes a prize with Mewtwo or if he switches into a different Pokemon or not. He's powering up his own Bouffalant, so there is or his own Trachyon, my bad. So Derek, he found the Trachyon. Now it is a threat. Uh, the Sigilifs only have 90 hit points. So he's right back in this game, folks. When Katie, uh, next prize she takes, I have to imagine the Sigilif is going down. And we'll see how this one develops down the stretch. Katie. She could have been up more prizes at this point, I feel. She could have really taken out that Bouffalon, but uh, we'll see what game plan she had in mind. All right, so here is Katie. She could take out that Mewtwo with the Sigilyph if she wants to. We'll see uh, how she wants to play this out. She could get down the two prizes. And Derek has five prizes now. Let me update that for you. We know Katie has a number of supporters in her hand. We'll see which one she chooses to use. Right now, that Sigilyph is hitting the Bouffalant for 60, I believe. And she did get rid of the Espirita that was out, so now it's back down to 100 HP. And 
and she can knock it out if that's what she chooses to do. But that track on Derek has is very menacing. Uh, again, the object of this game is to knock out six prizes worth of your opponent's Pokemon. Katie has taken out one Pokemon, which uh, netted her two prizes, an EX Pokemon. And Derek has just knocked out Katie's Terrakion. And Katie's going to go ahead and try to power up the next Sigilyph. Uh, in case this one goes down, it looks like it is uh, slated to go down. She can knock out the Mewtwo if she wants to, and it looks like that is what she's going to do. So she's going to go down to two prizes left to Derek's five. I don't think Derek is in an awful position here. It was definitely a lot worse earlier in the game, and he's kind of uh, weathered the storm as best he could, so to speak. All right, so Katie has two prizes left, and Derek is gonna go ahead and set up the retaliate knockout on the Sigilyph. And you know, if this Terrakion lives a couple turns, he can take out both of Katie's Sigilyphs and try to mount some sort of comeback with his EX Pokemon now that they'd, they'd be free. And Katie's Bouffalant is heavily damaged. It's got 80 already. Uh, a hit of 40 will take it out. And the camera has died again. Sorry guys, this is, I don't know what to say. This is a horrible situation. And it's back. And right in time to see Derek knock out Katie's Sigilyph. That little kid, man, he's, uh, he's menacing us. He's just sitting over there unplugging our cord and stuff. He's an animal. All right, so Katie has decided to go ho-oh. She's got three in there, and she gets the first one, so we don't get to watch her flip coins for 30 seconds. And she chooses a psychic fighting and a grass, and she goes ahead and energy switches the psychic to the sigilyph, and then she catches the bouffant. So she's going to go ahead and knock out the bouffant, it looks like. And she also has a scoop up, so, oh, that could have been a big scoop up as well. Try to save her Bouffalon maybe, or, uh, yeah, I'm not actually sure why she plays scoop up, so to speak. You don't see that very often in Ho-Oh decks. A lot of people like to stay away from flip coins. So she goes down to one prize now. We'll see if she's able to take out that last prize. She does have some breathing room because Derek has four prizes left. Um, but she played the Ho-Oh to get the Psychic back. So Derek kind of has an opportunity for an EX knockout down the road. Derek is, we'll see if he opts to just take out the Sigilyph or not. He's really surveying his options. This is a, an important turn for him in this matchup. Because uh, Katie has a lot of options at her disposal. I mean, if he had an end, this would be the time to play it, I think. She has a pretty big hand. You have to imagine she has some sort of energy switch action. And he actually attached a DC to that Terrakion, which is a pretty big deal if she can get her a Mewtwo out. You have to imagine she plays Mewtwo. And if she's able to power up a Mewtwo, uh, that DC could be a fatal blow that he had to attach that. And I think Katie actually took a prize, so he didn't need to play the DC. All right, so there's the return KO. He's down to three prizes, three to one now. And she chooses to promote her ho -Oh. She has a couple Mewtwo's in her hand. And there is a random receiver. And she hits an end. That's uh, probably not the support she wanted to see. She only has one prize left.
She also has uh, Tornado CX, looks like an Ultra Ball, an Energy Switch. And time has just been called in the round. I don't think it'll come into factor in this game. Maybe for, for Derek if he can't take two prizes. We'll see if Katie can finish off Derek in the next three turns. She's really taking her time here. She has a sky arrow out, so Ho's retreat is now one. I don't think she had an energy in her hand to attach, and she chooses to use another rebirth. She's getting all these hoes out of the discard pile that she uh, threw away earlier. It'll be interesting to see if she chooses to attack with this hoe she just got back, maybe. And it looks like she doesn't have a third energy type, so wow. And there's the energy switch to power up Ho. And she hits it for 80. Rainbow Burn does 20 plus 20 more damage for each different energy type attached to this Pokemon. So she has three different energy types. So it does 20 plus 60 for 80 damage. And ho is also resistant to the Terrakion, so it'll be getting hit for 20 less damage. And Derek has a huge hand. Uh, and this is turn one after time, so uh, Derek has to take two prizes between this turn and his next turn if he survives that long. You have to imagine he's going to get this Terrakion out of the active spot somehow. has enough energy to retreat. Its retreat cost is lowered by one because of the Sky Arrow that's in play as well. And I do think he had some energy switch in his hand, so he could uh, re realistically retreat and then power up this Tornado CX on the same turn with energy switch. And a Skyla out of Derek, so he's going to grab whatever trainer he wants from his deck. Looks like he's eyeing up the Max Potion to uh, save that Terrakion from certain demise. And he's going to really try to stall Katie from taking that last prize. I'm not sure if he could win and or I'm not sure Katie can win on her next turn. She only has her next turn to take that last prize. But I'm also not sure Derek can win uh, the turn after. So we're going to see how this, uh, this one turns out. He actually uh, max potions first there. Maybe. Uh, not sure why he wouldn't retreat there. He definitely has to uh, attack this turn. Maybe he's just trying to burn switches. You think he, uh, he might want to save that switch in case the Terrakion gets captured up next turn. And uh, he, Katie does have that end. She could catch up the track on an end, and Derek would have to have another switch in order to uh, be able to attack and win, so to speak. And there's a Landris as well. It's not going to play a factor in this game, I don't think. But it is in his deck.
And we see Derek just thinning out cards from his hand, I think. There's always the possibility of an end, and you just don't want some of these cards in your hand. You don't want to draw an ultra ball back late game off of an end. He wants to get the best three cards he can and put himself in a situation to win. So he's going to uh, hit the ho for 100. He has to flip a coin for that attack. If tails, he discards the energy. And he did flip tails, so the fighting goes to the discard pile. And it looks like Kitty, uh, let's see what her options are here. She has to, um, this is turn two of time. So she can either win this turn or Derek would have to take two prizes on his next turn in order to keep the game going. It looked like she top decked a catcher though, so we'll see how she plays this out. She is, uh, based on her hand, you think that she might catch her uh, one of Derek's big fat Pokemon. I don't think she's going to be able to take this last prize, but she's going to catch her up one of Derek's bigger treaters and him to three and hope he doesn't draw a switch. She saw that he wasted a switch last turn when he really didn't have to, I think, just to get it out of his hand, but uh, we will see. And that looks like she's uh, what she's going to do. She's uh, going to go look through Derek's district card pile and count up counts of everything. It looks like I saw I saw two switches. I'm not looks like maybe even three, so this could be a deciding factor. She's gonna go ahead and retreat to the ho -Oh. So Derek will have to have a switch and a catcher and an energy. Or he actually doesn't need the energy. Or yeah, he does need an energy. Wait, no, ho -Oh only has 160 HP, so the Tornado CX can't attach. Looks like he got the catcher part. And he uses the energy retrieval as well. He is going to need a switch. Does he have the switch? He has a switch too. Wow. Derek got the perfect, perfect hand off of that. He got switch, catcher. That's what he needed. And wow. Uh, you have to give him credit for sticking in this game for as long as he has. And this is going to continue on. That was Derek's last turn if he wasn't able to tie the game up in prizes, which he just did. A ho -Oh is an EX Pokemon. When it gets knocked out, the opponent draws two prizes. So Derek goes down to one prize now. And uh, Katie, he had to think she uh, was a big favorite at one point in this match, but like I've said all along, you never know what's going to happen in this format. These EX Pokemon uh, just can swing things so wildly over a course of just a couple turns. They give up two prizes and you only start with six, so wow. You have to think she might uh, bring out another ho -Oh and swing. She's not out of this. She can... She's not out of it, that's all I have to say. Uh, she can absorb a Tornadus hit as long as Derek doesn't have another catcher. It seems like he has used a number of catchers over the course of this game. You know, he tried to get around Sigilyph early, so. But you never know. And she's going to end both players down to one. Alright, and we will see what is drawn off of this. I don't think Katie can win this turn. 
she would have to have some extreme draw, good draw here, which is impossible off the one card from the end. It looks like she's gonna swing with Mewtwo. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe swing with try to get another Hoa and swing with that for a turn, but. You can't fault the Mewtwo, it's a great Pokemon card. And another end. I think both players have played uh, four ends at this point. They've been just all over. They started the game each inning, and now they're finishing the game with ends as well. Derek needs a Pokemon catcher to win outright this turn. Uh, the Bufalon is heavily damaged on the bench. Catcher brings up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. You think he would have played if he had it, and he retreats to a Landorus. And Katie has the catcher of her own off of that end, or top deck, and she's just able to uh, bring up the Tornado CX and take her last prize. So uh, Derek had a tremendous comeback in the game, but it was uh, not enough. Katie just had too big of a lead, and she's able to finish off Derek. Wow, that was an amazing game by both players. And Derek, he tried his hardest to come back, but it's just not enough. Um, we will be back with round four. Hopefully, we can try to catch that kid that's messing around with our camera, but you never know. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to put some music up for you uh, during the break. That was a really long game, so next round should be coming up pretty soon. Thanks for watching, guys.